Thank you, darling. Good to see you. All right. Should we go into our next hour? Okay. Let's do it. Let's talk about what we got. Do you want me to stay here? Where do you want me to go? I'll walk. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me just adjust my uh, cards here, get myself ready to go. So, how many of you peel things or shred things or prep things in the kitchen? Maybe you're looking for an all-in-one system, and I've had this on once before, and it screamed with Chef Shahir. This is our everyday all-in-one peeling set. Um, I own, actually own this. It's called the multi-use speed peeler. It peels, it grates, it zests, it slices, it juliennes. It does all that in one easy, reloadable, because you got all these different peelers here, all right? And then you just add the inserts. That's all you need to do. And you're looking at the chef taking care of it. If you want to get it, we are doing it at $19 and a $20 bill. And it does all those different things. That's coming up a little bit later. And then I have to show you this. This is brand new. I asked them to put it in the show. Um, I'm very serious about possibly getting this. That's the peeler set. We're over here now. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, D. All right. I, I move too fast sometimes. So how many of you out there have always wanted to have a cappuccino or an espresso machine, right? You know, you got a coffee pot and you're like, I just want cappuccino. I want espresso. But those things can be two, three hundred, four hundred dollars, right? And they're huge. I had a cappuccino espresso machine. It took up an entire dining room table in the corner of one of my restaurants. We had it like off in the corner. It was that big. What if I told you this one is six inches by 13 inches? And it does everything the restaurant or the coffee shop machines do. You get your choice of a single shot of espresso, or you can get your, cho your, your choice of a double. There's your little wand, which steams your milk. So if you want cappuccino, you want to make a latte, or some frappe or whatever the heck you got, you can do that with this as well. Heavy grade, heavy duty loader. This is like the restaurants. It's $99, it's a steal. Speaking of a steal, right? Here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to check out, relax, enjoy our next presentation of I think one of the best today's specials we've done in a while. Here we go. in cast iron. Well, here's what I'll tell you. Your grandparents probably invested in it. I would even say their grandparents might have been invested in it. Yeah. It is one of the original forms, if not the original form, of cookware that we use. Why has it always been so highly regarded? Because nothing holds temperature like cast iron. Heavy, thick, easy to cook with, hard to burn in because it doesn't heat up too fast and it cools down very slowly. So you can heat on lower temperatures. But that steak Ooh. right there, that fond, so we call that caramelization, mm -hmm. that's what's gonna give you the flavor for your sauce. So if you wanna make a pan sauce, chef's gonna tell us all about that. So we are offering a four and a half quart uh, cast iron. We are also gonna give you the lid to go along with it. You're gonna get the little silicone handles because this has two helper handles on either side, okay? Everything is included that you need. Look at those steaks. Chef, you got, we gotta cut into one of those this time, all right, because that's crazy. I will introduce you to the chef in just a minute. Before we get to that, I wanna talk about the value. If you go and you invest in, in cause there's some very famous brands of, of uh, cast iron cookware, two that I know of. You just get a regular cast iron pan, it's 100 bucks just for a regular cast iron pan with one handle, all right? Nine out of 10 times, they're not gonna be, they're not gonna be seasoned. It's gonna be raw cast iron, okay? Hammered cast iron, which means you gotta season it. Nobody has time for that, nobody knows how to. Most people, the only people who really know how to do that are chefs, right? Because you can do, I've seen it done with salt, I've seen it done with oil, in the oven, all different things, okay? You never have to do that. And the reason they do that is to get the surface ready for cooking. When you season a pan, a cast iron pan, it becomes easier to release. It doesn't stick as readily. It still will stick, but not as readily. Otherwise, everything you put in cast iron is gonna stick to it. So you have to do that, okay? With this, you don't have to. If you look inside, and I'll pick, should I pick the red one? How about the red one? Where are you gonna stop? I just wanna show you the inside. Let's go to the blue one, or the white one. Here we go. When you look inside this pan, all right, you'll see we have put a non-stick coating inside. See how it's been blasted? 
on the inside, you still have the texture of cast iron, but the entire interior is now nonstick and never needs to be seasoned. I'm gonna turn it so you can see it really close. See how beautiful that is? That is all a non-stick finish on the inside. They have also included two helper handles on either side. I'm gonna take the little silicone pads, which we're giving you, by the way, off, and show you this is one solid piece. Are you ready for the sound? I know you wanna hear it. It's the best sound on the planet. D dinner, you do this around my house? About, you know, we were kids? Man, we, we, we would run from any tree fort in town. We'd be like, mom's the food ready. The reason I do that is that good cookware makes a good sound because it's solid. Most of the pans you cook on are very thin. They heat up, you have hot spots, they burn. You ever do an omelet and you're like, why is one side cooking and the other's not? You ever do a grilled cheese and why is the top of the grilled cheese brown and yeah. the bottom still white? Yeah. You're cooking in a stainless pan. Stainless is not a good conductor of heat, which is why a lot of people will put aluminum in between stainless, because aluminum yep. is a soft metal and a very good conductor of yep. heat. Nothing is gonna beat cast iron, all right? I don't get into all the molecular structure of what cast iron is, but it is so jam-packed that it holds temperature for a long, long time. It heats up and it stays hot, which makes it perfect oven to table. You ever you, you serve yeah. a lasagna and somebody wants seconds, you gotta go back to the oven. Yep. You can leave your lasagna out on the table and it'll stay hot. Here's the value. Every day of the week, $74.95. And that's cheap. They're 100 bucks. And, and I'm talking about a regular 10 inch, you know, saute in a cast iron pan, you know, with a handle, with one handle. We're gonna give you those two silicone covers so that you can take it out of the oven without burning your fingers. And you can bring it to the table. I just put them back on, all they do, they slide right over the end. Now I can pick this up. See how easy? The lid, notice it's recessed on the top. You know why. We want the good, the good stuff to go back in. We don't want to be cleaning up our stove every time. There is a little pour area there. There is a steam vent right there, which allows for the steam to come out, because if you don't, the lid's going to do that, right? So you want that to be able to come out. I have it in white. I have it in teal, beautiful teal. Mm. I have it in black. I have it in red, which is one of the most popular colors of the day. I am gonna buy it in this blue as soon as I get off air. All right? I'm sure my, my order will go into Sarah's I'll hour, but one. I'm okay with that, because I love Sarah, and that's okay. How many left? 680 left. Man, we had 1,000 when I started in my last hour, so this is going quickly. And then finally, it comes in uh, the rose color, all right, which you never see. Great country, kind of a country it's beautiful. style. Yeah. You know what it is? And here, this is Chef Shahir Masood. You guys all know him. He's been with us for, for a long time now. Almost two years. Professional yeah. chef. Look at this. One of the best guys I know. He know. You know what? He breaks it down, makes it easy for you. Look at the cleanup. I mean, that's where I see those stay, beautiful steaks. But that's why we stay Amazing. away. We don't yep. think it's going to be easy. To exactly. Clean. Look at that. He cleaned it completely out. Anyway, chefs with us. I, this is one of the most impressive things. Will you talk about what's going on on top of that chicken? Right Look there? at that chicken. So when we talk about cast iron, we Jeez. talk about it getting hot, staying hot, being a great conductor of heat. What does that mean? When I add cold chicken or cold steak or cold pork chop, the temperature of my pan doesn't go down. Because it's cast iron, yeah. that's how I get even browning, even searing on chicken, on steak, on fish, on whatever. Look but it's non-stick. So not just for Look. cleanup. Non-stick in terms of your chicken's not gonna stick. Your skin that. on salmon's See not going to stick. It's, Look it's at like, that color. You know what it is? I always say... It's like crackle. Your chicken skin should be like thin glass. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Like, like paper thin. And you should hear shatter. And, and I'm hearing that. That's what you that. want. Okay? You don't want to do that until you take it out, but now... Look at my man with the coco vent going on. Now, here we go. What the heck? Now, last hour we did a dish with white wine and sage yeah. and bacon. This hour we're going to go red wine. And here's another point. Old school cast iron, you cannot cook with acidic wine, tomato, lemon juice. Because of our nonstick coating, you can cook with whatever. Wine, tomato, lemon juice, it's all good. So now we're gonna mix it up, and this is so much fun. The same techniques, stock. searing, then stock, yep. some wine, and cover it up, and you've got a whole new flavor profile all together. We got a little bit of wine, a little bit of stock, a yeah, little bit of tomato, bit in there. Yep. right? And we can do kind of a little modern catchatory vibe going oh, on. Some, dude, look at some bacon. bacon, if you've got pancetta dude, you at home. Put, you could put bacon on a shoe and I would probably. Some go. Oh, olives. I love the, look at the olives. 
So you're creating, and by the way. We're building has, flavor. Has Chef done anything crazy hard? You can do it. Seared some chicken. Yep. And by the way, when you sear your chicken skin side down, you don't even have to put any fat in there. There's enough fat in that chicken skin. Actually, okay? you're right, because it's going to render out yes, that crispy. And, and you want that crispy. And you want yep. that crispy. What else you got going now, on Now, check here? this out over here. Is this cream in here? I've got a little bit of cream. I'm looking for my eggs. I'm going to get eggs on set, because we're going to poach some eggs in the cream. Okay. Last hour, we poached them in tomato sauce like a shakshuka. This hour, we're going to poach them in a little bit of cream, we'll do some alfredo. Some we'll get some eggs out here. Now, look at this over here. This is where I did the ribeye, and I want to show this. Sticky teriyaki. First of all, it came up to a boil right away. We're talking about heat retention. But even the stickiest thing like teriyaki, yes, I'm using metal utensils. Don't worry about it. It's not gonna scratch. Look at that, not sticking. And now we're going in with some veg. We're going in with some peppers, some broccoli, and then we're gonna talk about the lid. So you're gonna do like a, almost like an Asian steak, We're right? gonna do like a little Asian flair of a steak. And put that on top. And we're gonna put that on top. And notice one, we've only used one pan. One we don't have three different things going on here. It's not a three ring circus. Now look at this. It steams up right away because that silicone lip is air tight. It's now gonna steam those veggies. We could do the same with the chicken. Yeah, so it. the chicken, you could finish cooking stovetop with your lid. We've gone from searing to braising. You could also put it in the oven. And let me tell you, the one thing we haven't even really talked about is the flavor. Look at this. When you cook. Love it. In like a, well, let's say like a cast iron Dutch oven. Yep. Which this is kind of like that, okay? It's, it's a cast iron nonstick brazier, but I call it Dutch oven mainly because it's deep. Do you look, my hand is inside the pan. This is a three inch deep pan. And when you're braising, which yep. basically just means partially cooked in liquid, all right, you're not, you're not covering it. Yep. You want it to just absorb that flavor and tenderize, right? And that's what it does. So I love the lid because when you braise, when you poach, when you steam, yeah. you are tenderizing your meats. Now, we're living in an age where everything's expensive. Buy the lesser cuts of meat. I'm gonna show you that pot roast in a second. I can't wait for Buy that those again. less expensive so cuts. Good. Sear it hard in your cast iron. Wipe it out super clean. And then put in some wine, some aromatics, some stock. And that airtight lid is now gonna allow you to braise either stovetop yeah. or in the oven. It's totally versatile and totally airtight. Look at that. When you open it up, all that steam releases out. Oh yeah. And look, nothing is sticking to the bottom. Even a sticky teriyaki. You can see the bottom of my pan and I am using metal utensils. Hey chef, if you don't get your eggs, <laughs> you, don't, you, want, you want to tell you what I, what I, what my thought is? Let's put some mussels in there. Let's do the mussels, <laughs> dude. Let's do some mussels and cream. Let's do mussels and cream. And now the eggs will show up. Well, no, we'll but do don't you? Eggs. I love mussels in a cream sauce. I love mussels like in a cream curry, sauce. Curry cream. Oh, Check this you. out. Old school cast iron. We said no lemon juice, no tomato, no wine. Here, mussels in the cream with the acidic tomato, or sorry, the acidic lemon. Yeah. Boom. Now, I know you like fennel. Throw some fennel in oh, there. Oh, dude, so good. This, by the way, this is restaurant food. Yeah. You're doing it at home. Can I cover? Cover it up. And you're gonna see, you Watch. feel that airtight yeah, yeah, lid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the silicone handle, the silicone lip, excuse me, and you got the handles. So we're gonna take this thing, Stove top to table. It's so well made. You know, it's funny. Yeah. You ever, when, you know, when, it's like when you buy a really good car, you know, one of the ways to check a real quality is how does the door sound when it shuts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, you it's know what I mean? That. When you and put the tactile the feel. on because, it's, because you're taking that silicone, it's soft, it's not clanky. Yeah. It, you can't hear. Like we have one open that you can hear, oh, but if this you cover good. that, we cannot even hear it. That's how amazingly tight that seal is. And when you're brazing, that's half the battle. Yeah. By the way, oven safe, 500 degrees. 500. We're gonna go to the oven right now. While we're doing that, Chef, I'm gonna go over and show them colors one more you time. Got it. So take a walk with me over here. And my wonderful producer, Andre, uh, will keep us posted as to when we will sell out of any of our colors. I know we lost one color. Uh, the pumpkin, I think we lost last night. Let me just tell you, color doesn't matter. What makes this so special is how it cooks. I know you want to match it to your kitchen, so I'm not going to pretend that that doesn't matter, but the, what's really important is that you get the vessel itself. Rose is going to be the next to go up here. I have a couple, what did you say, 280? 280 left in the rose. 1,200 gone. Look at how beautiful this pan is. And I want you to look at how thick. That's important. Remember what I said? This is not a, this is not a flimsy $25 crappy, you know, a closeout store pan. It's not that. Well, you're going to have this forever. Blue, I think we had, oh God, so another, another five dozen just went since I did the last check. 2,500 gone. I'm buying this after the show. Got to save one for you guys. Yeah, I know, I know. But you know, that's good. If they get it and I don't get it, I'll get it next time. We'll see. Red is the most popular. There it is. There's the lid. Everything that you need. Look at how well made. Even the, and by the way, 
even the lid. It's great. Well, because Tempered you glass. can't put a cheap lid on a good quality pan. So that's why, when you think about the value for $34, to get this, to get this, to get the little helper handles that you can take off so you don't burn your fingers there, look. And then they slide right on. And by the way, a lot of you may be wondering, I'm gonna get to the other calls in a sec, how do I clean this? Clean it in the kitchen sink. You can put it in the yep. dishwasher. I never put my cookware in the dishwasher. I just don't because it takes up too much space. And I'm like, hot water and soap. when it cleans this easily with nonstick, yep. hot water soap, rinse it out. That's it. Here it is in black. <clears throat> this is called teal, great color in teal. And this is also called, uh, this is white. Um, chef brought up a good point. Yep. If you were buying this as a gift, great, great color, right? Uh, you don't find white cookware anywhere. So and it's, it's really unique, and, yeah. and it'll go with uh, any style that's in your kitchen. So if you've checked out what we got going, steak and veggies. Done. Like a chicken, kind of a coco van type of thing Little you got going coco on there. Little coco van, meats, uh, cacciatore. Look at how, look at the size of those pork chops. No, no, can I say this? This is the exact same rose pan that I seared the steak in. I did the sticky teriyaki, and I just wiped it out. Look at the bottom of my pan. That's, another one. that's where I you see know, you the You could get another one in there, but you know not to do that. We don't want to overcrowd it. You got it. <laughs> We're going for a hard Chef sear. Knows. But I'm just saying, like, if I showed you this pan right now, you never would have guessed that I hard seared steaks in it before and did a, a, a sticky teriyaki sauce before that. I just wiped it out. That's how easy your cleanup is. And you keep going. Oh so God. we're talking non-stick cast iron. It gets hot, it stays hot. You're gonna get even beautiful browning and you're gonna clean it up easy. Look at this. This time I'm getting a plate for the, I pot, know you're for ready. the pot roast. I know you're ready. Well, I wanna show everybody because listen, if you only make one thing in this to start, yeah. let it be like a pot, a pot roast or, or a pork roast. And I agree because in that one oh. recipe, you're doing a couple things. A pork roast or a pot roast, you're searing it first, and yeah, you want that hard. cast iron sear nonstick. Mm -hmm. Then you're adding liquids, wine, stock, some veggies. Now we're talking about a one-pot dinner. Then you're getting the airtight lid, yeah, and you. what that does is yeah. you're finishing cooking with steam, and you're braising it. Let's, still let's look. reveal. Wait till we get the shot. We'll show you. Oh. So, and I, I, you came brought that out of the oven. I don't know if I want to grab the, the lid. Chef is, is fingers, okay? man. You got the chef, chef hands. Chef fingers. So here you go. You watch your stuff. I'll serve myself. So what we've done in here, and I, I tell you, if I you only it. make this dish, yeah, I'll do it, Chef, thank you. You got it. If you only make this dish, and by the way, this is chuck roast. It's not expensive. It's cheap. This is like $3.99, $4.99 a pound versus yep. $20 for tenderloin. Watch what it does to the meat. So Perfect. if you like pulled pork, even if you want to put your chicken in here, look at how it shreds and it is completely cooked. Look at the potatoes. I want to pull a potato out there, and I'm just going to... I'm just going to split it. Oh, so good. Look at the color Perfect. inside those little Yukons. Look at how they've absorbed the flavor of the meat. So if you were to serve this, I'll just pull a little bit out on the plate. I'm going to take that tater. But I, I mean, does this not look... This reminds me of like and, and, and I love that you every said, grandma. This is one of the cheapest cuts you can get. Pork shoulder is a very affordable cut. A pot roast is an affordable cut. Yeah. How do you make it something exquisite? With technique, with cast iron. Sear it, cover it airtight with that lid, and braise it. Coming into the holiday season and colder months for a lot of us all over the country, this is how you want to eat and this is how you want to serve. Look at this. All right. I'm going in. I'm going to try to get a carrot. Get in there. Look at that bite. Okay, and you're right, it soaks up the flavor of the beef. The potato, when I see the potato like a darker color, I know it's yeah, got the man. juice in there. Got the beef, beef stock, the wine. Oh, good shot, thanks guys. All right, I'm going in. You got a hard job today, huh? Dude. You got a hard job today. What? <laughs> I do, I get to work with my man too. <laughs> What person would not want to come home from work and have that cooking? It's awesome. What, what are coming in from a wintry day? Yep. Maybe you and your partner, husband, wife, whatever, are out shoveling the driveway. You come in, and this is in the oven. And then so maybe good. your kids come home. How many? 21,472. They're going to get this home, and they're going to make that exact meal. Love. Or they're going to make the mussels. Or they're going to make the cook about chicken. Yep. Listen, you can bake... You could do an upside down cake in here because it's yep. nonstick, okay? You could do cornbread. I love your idea about cornbread. Because cornbread's, cornbread's supposed to be done in cast iron. Boom. What'd we say earlier? There is not a self respecting <laughs> Southern grandma, you know who we are, Look at that. that would cook fried chicken outside of a cast iron pan. That's because because 
they know heat and temperature is so key in getting the crisp Absolutely. and getting the chicken yep. to fry crispy rather than to absorb the fat. Dude, that was a good mistake. I loved it. Look Listen, that. now look, wow. this is a restaurant quality muscle. We got some cream, some fennel, some chili. We talked about cooking with acidity, smell that. lemon, that smell that white ocean. wine, old school cast iron, you can't do that. But here's the thing, with those handles, for me, Guy, yeah. this goes right to the table. Oh yeah, buddy. Because those yeah. muscles are open. Right. I think it looks great. You serve it with a side of crusty bread, and that is oven to table worthy cookware. I, I love how it looks. I've had mussels in a couple of really, really good restaurants. Yep. They always serve it in the cooking liquid in the vessel. Absolutely. Because they get cold so fast because they're yep. paper thin. The little shells. Not like clamps. Clamps stay hot for a while, but mussels, yep. they get cold really quickly. You can do your mussels in there. You could do clams, seafood, if you like to blacken. You know where you take the, the pepper spice yeah. blend, put it on your protein, hit it in a cast iron yep. pan, put whatever your favorite, you know, maybe wants a good olive oil, and just hit it really quick. Delicious. Salmon. Salmon yeah. and cast iron is one of the best fish you'll ever have in your life. And it could be skin on. Think about our chicken that we oh, did. Oh, it has to be. Some people are worried about things sticking. It's not just about cleanup. It's about actually cooking. Do skin on salmon. Do skin on chicken. Get the browning. Get the browning of the salmon skin as well. Mm. None of it's going to stick. So it's non-stick. It's cast iron. You're getting that even heat, and you're getting those results. And I love that you also mentioned really briefly about baking. Not just cornbread. You're doing your cobblers. You're doing, you know, oh. a focaccia recipe, right? And look, this pan I just put on. I just put on our, our director to to Daniel ends. just said that Boom. took 15 seconds. It's up to a boil. If that was a stainless pan, that. you'd be waiting three minutes. Isn't that you amazing? Would? Yeah. It's up to a I just put this in right now. So now we're gonna move into those eggs. But look, it's been there for 15 seconds and we're we're cooking. You're, yeah, now. you're already going. Right? Love it. Look at so, your look at your pork chops. So here's my pork chops, a little bit of apple, a little bit of bacon, a little bit of brown sugar with some stock. I like sweetness with my pork. But look, is anything sticking? Absolutely not. So whether it's teriyaki sauce, a little brown sugar sauce, nothing is sticking, right? If I wanted to finish cooking it, I could put the lid on and look, airtight. Stick it you in the can oven. See it. You yeah. can finish it in the oven. I would like if you're Isn't making almost any of the meals that we've made so far, except maybe the pot, the seafood. Put it in the oven. You can, you can sear on a medium to high temperature, which you'll get up to very quickly, to get that caramelization, because that's the foundation for sauce. Yep. And then put that lid on, turn the temperature down in your oven to maybe 275, 300, and let it sit there for two or three hours. Let it yeah, go. Absolutely. It's not going to burn, because this holds temperature. It doesn't get hot and cold. The reason things burn is because temperature gets too hot, yep. and then it goes down, and it gets hot again. Which is why a lot of times you'll be like, why did I burn my grilled cheese? Well, because you're doing it in a stainless pan and it's hard to control that temperature. And don't get me wrong, stainless pan is great for a lot of different things. Beautiful cookware, all right? If I want to make one egg or two eggs, maybe I pull out my stainless steel pan. But if I want to make a family meal, yeah. or even if I'm just cooking for two, because I, I, I'm, and I know Chef knows this because, you know, he t talks about this, teaches this. Never yeah. crowd your food because when you crowd your food, it steams. Which is why we put the perfect number of chicken Yep. thighs in here. He only went three on the pork because you don't want to crowd it. You want that sauce to develop. Look at how good And with four and a half quarts, you got plenty of room. Four and a half quarts, and we want to talk about the depth. Three inches high is a great, great number for a couple reasons. One, it allows you to fit a three pound pot roast. Two, it's now your roaster, wow. it's your casserole. I'm gonna show yeah. you a big pasta bake in a couple minutes. Just the sheer quantity from that three inches so of good. depth, four and a half quarts, it's such a versatile size because it being non-stick, I could use it just to do some eggs, non-stick. Replace that old non-stick that you have that lost its non-stick coating. Or I could use it to feed a crowd. Bam. I could use it as my deep fryer. You know, so that depth and that size, yeah. it really takes us into a new territory of, your way. Of, of sheer versatility, right? Well, and by the way, like we said, that's, I mean, grandmas for years have been yep. deep frying in cast iron. Absolutely. Because they don't have to keep it on high. When you fry at home, I'll guarantee if you're using a stainless steel thing, you got the heat on as high as it goes. Yep. And you can't control that temperature. So what happens is your food cooks too fast. It's on, not done on the and inside spotty. and it's burned on the outside. That's it. Check out the donuts and watch what Chef does here. So look, the cold donuts go into my frying oil and you could tell from the bubbles, that oil is staying hot. 
The oil does not drop in temperature if I add a cold donut or if I add a cold piece of chicken. It's still rip roaring hot and staying consistent. By the way, you could tell from the size of the bubbles that we have even heat here. Yeah, this yeah. isn't an inconsistent heat. So the reason why we love to fry in cast iron is because it gets hot, it stays hot. The exact same reason why we like to sear and poach and braise and roast. It's yeah. all about getting hot, staying hot and having an even consistent heat. And even Guy listening to you talk about steel, I, I know there's people out there who cook with steel or sure. aluminum and they get frustrated because they try to sear something or they try to braise something and yeah. you get spots of brown but spots of gray sure. and sometimes it kind of steams and sometimes it, you're not getting that consistent perfect coloration. Whether you're frying, searing, roasting or braising, you're going to get even color because yeah. you're getting even hey, heat. Listen, we'll, we'll be totally honest here with you and I'll be just transparent because you, know, you know I used to buy cookware from a couple of my restaurants so I know about sure. it. Sure. We had a ton of stainless steel cookware. We had cast iron pans for blackening. We had yep. little nonstick mini woks for doing veggies. Yep, exactly. So everybody uses different pans for different things. This is a universal pan that yep. you could do everything. So if you don't, you can't do a full size set of Curtis or a full size set of Wolfgang, yep. and you're in a, an apartment and you want one pan. This is it. That can do all those different things for you. Yep. And boy, let me tell you, if you're doing grilled sandwiches, man, do this. You do grilled cheese. All and of like it. Amani Cristos on here, you're gonna All get the it. most beautiful brown, crunchy bread. Oh. And you're right because this could be your fryer, your roaster, oh, your yeah. searing. It could just be your straight up non-stick if you wanna cook a couple fried eggs. It's gonna be your casserole dish. You're taking an oven to table, stove top to table. So this is one of the things actually we really pride ourselves at Kitchen HQ. We try and think about versatility. Yeah. You know, I always say it's gotta earn the space in your kitchen, right? Look at the mini donuts. And look, even color. I really <laughs> want you to see this, whether it's the chicken, the steak, or the frying. Everything is of even color. So if ever you've cooked anything, and you get spots of brown and spots are not perfect, it's because you're not cooking with cast iron. Yeah. But then we take it one step further and we said, heck, let's go non-stick to make clean up a breeze. It's the whole, it's, it's where it hits another level. It's awesome. Because listen, I get it. I don't like to clean any more than you do. I, I mean, and, and trust me, I've been doing it for years. I mean, I've been a single dad for almost all Danny's life. So I've had to do the dishes. He's yeah. gotten better as he's gotten older. Really good. He actually cleans his dishes all the time good now. Boy. But yeah, he is a good boy. But you know, I don't want to clean. And let me tell you, I have never owned. An, I mean, I, ha I have an original cast iron that I've had for yep. years. It's not. I seasoned it myself. I'm a restaurant guy. I knew how yep. to do it. I don't use it that often because I have to keep a paper towel on it. I have to oil it all the time. Yep. It's it's probably twice as heavy as this. And I'm like, it's just not worth it to me. And the size of it, it's too small. I got to cook for, I cook for me and Danny a regular, um, um, a regular cast iron pan yeah. with one handle. It's yeah, not yeah, big yeah. enough. And, and you know, Guy, I think it's important to tell people what is old school cast iron and what does seasoning mean. Sure. Old school cast iron, to season it, means you have to coat it in a fat, usually right. a neutral oil. Sure. And you certainly can't wash it with water. You can't wash it with soap. It can get grimy. You can't cook it's it with that. acid. It you can't nasty. cook tomato juice. Yeah. You can't cook lemon juice and wine. Why? We said why. Let's get cast iron, the even consistent heat of cast iron that we love, that heat retention of cast iron, but make it nonstick. You saw in this one pan when I did my steaks, I wiped it out totally clean. Then I went in with a sticky teriyaki and wiped it out and made it totally clean. And then I went in with this, in the same pan, I went in with my pork. Now this is caramelized. Look, look at that. Look at the caramel, oh guys. Oh my gosh, yeah, we'll get it's that It's not shot. sticking. Look at it. Even caramel apples and rosemary will not stick to the bottom of that pan. So it's not just That's about crazy. even heat. It's about making yeah. life easy so that you reach for the pan. Guys, did you get that? Look at this. Yeah, we're right on top of it. Yeah, that's a great shot. Perfect. Isn't that awesome? It is not. Because the temperature is not getting to burn level, yeah. it's getting, it's at bubble level, if that's if we can call it that. But if this got any hotter, which if you were on a stainless pan yeah. or even a cheap nonstick, you'd have to turn and turn up the heat and you'd see it get black on the corner. Now eventually this will get there. But we're not gonna burn it. But we're not gonna burn it. No, right. no, we're gonna control the heat and get that even coloration. And by the way, tons of these recipes, like the, the chicken, apples. like Color. the pork, the steak, they are up on hsn.com. And that's one of the things I love because they kind of let me roam free, develop recipes. And check this out. All of these, this is my one that I have at home. I'm a red guy. So all of these I cooked at home. That's the chicken, the ribeye. I did this at home. In my, there's a cobbler. And by the way, that cobbler, even fruity cobbler, if I scrape the bottom, it ain't gonna stick. A big pasta bake, which I'm gonna take out of the oven right now, doesn't stick. 
cheesy, sugary, cinnamon buns. All those recipes are up on hsn.com. And that's really kind of one of the pillars of our brand. I want you to get into it, get those recipes, get into cast iron cooking without the hassle, without the cleanup, and you get those recipes at the same time. Look at my sugary cobbler. I feel bad because I'm gonna break it. Look at the bottom. Yeah. Even a sugary peach cobbler is not sticking to the bottom. If that was in a stainless pan, the spoon will be harder to I don't even know many chefs that are on stainless that would cook a cobbler in stainless. A little uh, bit. That's what I mean. Well, you can if you add a ton, a ton of butter, which is fine. That's, that's good for it. It really depends. Come on over, because I want to show you, again, the oh, colors yeah. of all the... Look at that steam. It's crazy. I wanted to show you all the colors that we have available, because I know we are getting close to selling out again. I think in the uh, rows, got 180 mm. left. Okay? If you want the, the beautiful cobalt blue, I got, what, not even 500 at 490 left. If you want to get it in red, that's the most popular color. I'm still okay. I think I got a couple thousand left in red. Black also very popular. Well, that's your traditional cast iron, yep. right? So, and you see, and look at that, look at that beautiful finish on the inside. And guys, you, like I said before, I can't make the noise without my hand. <laughs> I mean, that's what cast iron is supposed to sound like. Is it heavy? It's not light, but I'm not killing myself. It's it's what nine pounds. And I got two hands because it's got two handles on it. And they're not welded, on, they're part of the pan. And we're gonna give you the little, little heat uh, proof little mitts to go on there, silicone mitts, so you can take it out of the oven and bring it to the table. This is teal, beautiful, gorgeous teal, right? A little pop of color for the holidays. And then I love the white. Chef and I both talked about it, like yeah. if you're giving it as a gift, um, and by the way, I know cookware, I used to purchase it, uh, you know, for restaurants years ago. You don't find white cookware, all right? Uh, and even in enamel, it's tough to find. You might find a saute pan once in a while at a closeout store, but to see a giant pot, and by the way, I will tell you this, this is as close to a smaller capacity stock pot yep. yeah. as you get. You wanna cook your spaghetti in here? Absolutely. It's perfect for me, you know, if you've got Absolutely. Four, like four people and you wanna yeah. cook pasta for them, don't get out an eight or a 10 quart stock pot, waste all that water, use this. Uh, that's what I meant when I said yep. it's an everything pan. It could be bo used for boiling water. It could be used for making a little bit of soup, yeah. a stew, a chili. It's got that depth at four and a half quarts and that three inches of height. Oh, that yeah. gives you the ability to do some pasta, to do a chili, so, to do you know a beef yeah. stew, which I have a recipe on hsn.com, a beautiful beef stew. Did you see that price? It's amazing. I, I would pay $75 in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat for this. Because it's... I have bought smaller cast iron, and it was a long time ago when I had my, bought my last... I'm, I still have it underneath the cabinet somewhere. Yeah. But it's not... It hasn't been a viable option for me because it's too small. It's great if I want to sear one or two steaks, but if Danny comes over, my mom, Lily, whatever, I'm not going to cook in shifts, okay? I need yeah. a larger pan. You saw we did, what, five, six chicken thighs? We did three jumbo... And by the way, those are the T-bone chuck pork uh, They are bone-in. Right? They're beautiful. Bone-in. We did enough mussels for four, four to six people over here. That's enough dessert for 10 people. We did a steak, a steak that's under there. I don't know if you can see it. And it look did. at the steak, it's buried steak. under my sticky teriyaki, yeah, it's look beautiful. Look at that, look at the steaks. We seared those beautiful steaks, if I can pull them up. There we go. Aren't those nice? Look at that pretty steak. Beautiful. And look at the caramelization on it, on a beautiful, gorgeous ribeye steak. We did that, we did eggs, we've done pot roast. Are you doing that smash okay, things? I'm I gonna love do those some things. smashed potatoes while I do my smashed potatoes. So, guy, those eggs that we poached in a beautiful spicy tomato sauce. Yeah. You want to talk about poaching made easy? Get that lid on there, and it's gonna poach. That's brunch for a crowd easy. Yeah, look it up. But look, yeah, it's nice. still steaming, guys. I took that off the still heat hot. like 10 minutes Peppers. ago. Peppers. Right? Oh my god. And it's still steaming. So mm. get into that spicy egg shakshuka. Do it in cream. Ooh, that's got some heat. I threw a little heat in there for you. What right. the heck did you do here? Okay, now. <laughs> Party meal. Party yeah. meal 101. Got a lot of people to feed? Go ahead, chef. What do we got As here? we head into the holiday season, let's say <laughs> I got 15 people coming over. Four and a half quarts. Look at how much pasta. It's a huge mm. pasta bake. And you can see the steam coming off. This is going to stay warm. Yeah, I'm going to get you just a giant chunk. Just go for Are it, you gonna man. Do it? I just want to take a little bite. And I, I just want to show the bottom, too. enough to choke a pig. Here. Look. <laughs> All right, here we go. Look at the bottom. Even cheese and tomato sauce. Guys, can you see in the bottom of my pan? I am using metal utensils. No worries. I won't scratch it. Look. Dude. Look at that. what they put in there? There's like ricotta? There's ricotta, like three wow. different cheeses, pecorino. But look, none of those sauces or cheeses are stuck and caked onto the bottom of that look pan. Look at the size of the capacity. There, there is enough food here 
for 15 to 20 people. Easy. With, Easy. with the depth that you have there. And I will guarantee that that whole thing probably costs less than $4. Well, when you think about Four or it. Four or five bucks, because cheese, well, if you include the high-end cheese, let's say 10 bucks. You could feed 15 to 20 people with this. Easily. Look at, look at the layers. I gotta go in one more time. What Get are you making? there. And really, when I think about it, I don't know if this was mm. by design. Everything is kind of affordable here. All these recipes, the chicken thighs, the pot roast, the pasta, we're feeding a crowd. We're actually using technique in terms of searing, braising, roasting, frying, poaching. Check out the, the recipes online for baking recipes like the cobbler, a focaccia. It's just one of those pans that it's a workhorse in your kitchen. There's nothing really it can't do. Now we're gonna do some smashed potatoes. Why not to go wow. with our pork, right? Look at the sheer pasta bake, the size, and again, go to hsn.com. It's so... I've got an amazing recipe for the I mean, pasta bake. I mean, I wanted to put it back just because I don't want, you know, but look at, you see, the spoon just disappeared. That's how, and that's a big spoon, that's how deep this pan is. So if you have to cook for a lot of people, and I'm talking about, listen, chef knows this better than anybody. This is, more often than not, this could be your, if you're a chef or in the restaurant business, yep. your busiest time of year because you're coming into fall. When you get into September, October, November, December, January, basically those are all the eating holidays, right? That's we right. have, you know, and, and go right through Easter. You have that whole six months, seven months where there's a lot of eating holidays, right? Thanksgiving, you got Halloween, maybe you're doing some par private parties. You got Christmas, obviously, Hanukkah, whatever celebrate, uh, holidays you celebrate, right? Kwanzaa, all of those different things. You have all these different meals. This doesn't care what holiday you're celebrating. That's it, it's man. gonna cook your food for you and it's gonna do it in style. You're gonna get great results. And by the way, when you see the even browning, because I, I know it. we don't want to rush it, the even browning oh, on those potatoes, and notice, Chef, maybe a tablespoon of olive oil or two. Maybe a tablespoon, not yeah. a big deal. And this is a great way to cook potatoes. You kind of par cook them and then smash them, and then finish cooking them in the oil, a little bit of garlic. I used to do this in the restaurant all the time. These smashed potatoes with sage. Now we can get in with some butter, right? This is fall cooking. But I, I really want to emphasize, it's not just for protein. It's wonderful for vegetables, for potatoes, root vegetables, braises, roasts, baking, frying. I mean, there's really nothing this can't do. And you're gonna see, no matter what we do, we're gonna get even color. This is what I mean. Even on a potato, we're getting that color, that browning. This is what you want. This is what flavor is all about, Yeah. right? You want browning. That's what we're talking about. Look at that. I notice. Oh, it smells good, right? You know what I noticed too is, the, and even the garlic is not burning because it's not getting that, that temperature. It's getting brown. And you want to get those out pretty quick because you know, yeah, guys, look, look, there it that's is. That's what I want. Yep, perfect. And we did this, again, in real time, a couple minutes. You want to parboil those potatoes, give them a smash, and then give them that crust. If you want to make something like that's a potato crazy. exciting again, this is how to do it. Even color, try even that with that, with that ribeye steak. Dude, or even just throw them right on top them of right the pork. On, yeah, go ahead. You know what I mean? Like, that's the way to do this. Oh, that'd be good on the pork. By the way, I tasted that apple, whatever, compote or whatever oh, you made so up. good. So good with pork. Didn't right? stick. So nope. even the sugary brown sugar with Will the rosemary. Will you show everybody how easy that and pan look, clean, Chef? Do you mind doing that? I'm gonna get you, get by the way. get a wet towel. Metal got utensils, towel. no problem. But I wanna show you a quick wipeout because. So let's show the pan first. There, we'll get, okay. we'll get a shot of it. Deke's, get in there, Deke guys. Get it for us. There he is. So this is what we just cooked all that food in. Yeah. And we let it kind of go. Garlic burns relatively yep. easy, So, but we already took it out. Watch. Look you would this. never be able to do that on a regular, on a regular um, Come on. cast iron pan. Never. never. You'd have to take the industrial scraper, steel wool, right? Look at that. That is completely clean. That's the nonstick we're talking about. I love it. I Listen, love it. we only have about five minutes remaining. We've sold out of a color, we're almost sold out of the rose. I'm getting limited on the blue. All the colors are gonna go. It's gonna sell out probably before the end of the day. I am, and by the way, to my, for my Facebook buddies out there, if you're interested, it's a go. This is a really, really great, great yeah. pan. I'm gonna get it in the blue because I don't have something that size. Like I have, Chef, I've got, believe yeah. it or not, I have a 20 quart stock pot that I use for well, lobsters. That's a big boy. Never that's big. I use it once it's a year. Big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and I have big stock pots that I only make soup in, right? Because yeah. soup, you want to make eight quarts of soup. For her, sure. But this is like half a stock pot, but double a saute pan. Yeah. So, and it's oven safe to 500 degrees. So you can do all those great meals. If you want to sear anything, nothing is better than cast iron, all right? And trust me, I, when, many, many years ago, I bought a full set of a very 
fancy, expensive set of copper cookware. Yeah. You, you, I'm sure Hard you know the of. name. Hard to take it care of. Begins with an M. Wonderful yeah. cookware set. I spent almost $1,500 on the set because I, because I love, I love cooking, and I was like, you know what? I want a fancy set. I want it. I loved it. The hardest cookware you will ever have to take care of. Yep. You literally have to clean it with metal cleaner, like every month, for it to stay shiny. It cooks amazingly. But it's not nonstick. They usually put like a tin material on the inside yeah, yeah, of yeah. it. Yeah. You got to use a lot of butter and fat. Most of those pieces are hanging on hooks in my kitchen yeah. for display. I use them maybe around the holidays. Yeah. But let me tell you, none of them cooks like cast iron. And so, guys, do you find? Close. Do you find? Well, they don't cook like cast iron. First of all, you don't get that even color. But like we said earlier, do you find if you know it's going to be a pain to clean, you don't reach for it? I don't. Right? And so at Kitchen HQ, we know this. So we said, hold on a second. I always want you to cook with cast iron, but I want you to use it. Right. I want you to reach for it knowing Those are not everyday you can pants. wipe it out. Like yeah. my copper set is a holiday set. I'll pull it out just to impress people. Oh, look at the fancy copper set. Yeah. Because I paid for it. And I'm like, dang it, I want people to see it. <laughs> but I'll tell you, it's harder to clean on the outside than it is on the inside. 100%. Because that copper just tarnishes, to, to, and it looks terrible. You know how pitted copper looks? Yeah. So we, once a year, I clean it up. I put it out there, and I'll use it once in a while. I love it in the oven. I like, I'll, I'll do little, yep. I have little mini casseroles that yep. I'll do like spinach, things like that, you know, with cheese and stuff. Um, but for your everyday cooking, this is what you want. And I don't care if there's only two of you in your empty nest. Remember, it's Absolutely. better. I always say this, and I, it's one of my the biggest things I could tell you. Always cook in a larger pan. Yep. Never. Give the food space like, to move. Give the, and give the food a time to brown and not steam, okay? And remember, is it any harder to cook a pan or to clean a pan this big versus a pan that big? No, <laughs> it's not any harder. But we naturally go to the smaller pan. Yeah. Because we're like, oh, it's less to clean. It's not. Use a bigger pan. This is a big pan. You're going to get that even browning. You're going to get that great crust. Whether it's slow cooking or short cooking or blackening, or fish, veggies. You, you, if you're a vegetarian, you have to have this pan. Imagine if you're a vegetarian, you got to do this for seared halloumi, for seared, you know, veggies. tofu, veggies, even cauliflower. Veggies. Yes, Ca cauliflower steaks. Getting that char even on a zucchini. Like this is kind of yeah. You know the potato color that we got. Sure. Even taking you know frozen shrimp, which is what I did here. Look how hot it got. Super quick to do a quick shrimp scampi, right? So even awesome. using frozen stuff. Yeah. Don't let it go to waste. Make it something spectacular and, with cast iron. And learn, go online and read about ca uh, cast iron cookware. Yeah. Uh, and if it's, you know, you might be able to find it in our thing, but I will tell you, not only easy to clean and easy to cook with, yep. but it'll help with the flavor of your food. Because it gets so hot, it creates and, and can hold the temperature. It's not that yep. it gets so hot. It's, it's, it slowly it's gets the temperature and then it stays there. So you're not jacking the heat up and down. But if you like are a vegetarian, do a dry saute with cauliflower and broccoli Love that. and corn. Yeah. And don't put any fat in there. Wait till the end and let it char. Let it char, get, so let it get good. color, and really oh. check out those recipes. On hsn.com, right. you're going to see your steam braise, everything. You, you want me to go over colors or are we done? They're saying I got to move on, chef. All right, colors real quick. Red, blue, teal, black, white, rose. If you want rose or blue, they will go first. Hey, by the way. Lots of fun stuff going over there on hsn.com. Yeah. What are we doing with Andrew's stuff? 40% off, and I see red up there. Does that say free shipping? That says free shipping, right? All right. Turmeric and curcumin. Guys, you got to get that stuff. It's good stuff. I take this stuff. Amazing. But no matter what you get, you're going to get a great deal. And remember, with Andrew's stuff, he makes it beneficial to buy more. If you want to just try it, get the 30 caps. If you love it, get the 240. Exponentially large savings. Every level you go up and more. Check out all the different things we have available there. When we go back, we got a great way to peel and slice and a great cappuccino maker. Stick around. We're making bigger, even better with our supersize values, and they're available only at HSN. Supersize values are based on the price per ounce of the same item in a smaller size. However, they do not reflect a price at which HSN would sell the item. Have questions? Call us at 1-800-284-3900. Ingredients that are rich in tradition, born from the clouds and foothills of the Himalayan mountains. Clean beauty that protects, nourishes, and repairs hair and skin. Shop the Tweaked by Nature Beauty Collection on HSN and HSN.com. 
My singular goal is to improve the quality of people's lives. Everything we do is intended to be unlike any other company of our kind. We just make exceptional vitamins so you could have exceptional health. It's not important that you get the products I'm offering, but it's very important that you get the information I'm sharing because information is the key to being a healthy person. Cheers to 40 years. Cheers to 40 years, Bobby. I love you. Happy 40th anniversary, Bobby. We love you. Happy anniversary. Man, it goes by quick. Cheers to 40 years, Bobby Ray. Cheers to 40 years, Bobby. Cheers to 40 years and many more. Cheers to 40 years, Bobby. Congratulations. Here's to 40 more years. Love you. Tune in for Bobby's 40th anniversary special, September 16th from 5 to 8 p.m. Welcome back. I'm with Chef Shahir. My name is Guy. I'm going to be with you for another 15 minutes. Um, and again, we welcome you uh, to join us. We're having a great time out here. You know, we were talking about okay, just really the nuts and bolts of cooking. Yep. Most of it is about, a lot of it is about prep, which mm -hmm. we're going to discuss now. Yep. And how you cook. You know, it's, it's, it's about the, the food that you buy, right? We always say start with the best ingredients. Yep. But how you prep your food is very, very important. That. And the shape of your food is very important. That's why restaurants spend a lot of money on professional machines and you know, processors and things to make things consistent. There is nothing more consistent than this kind of what we call, it's almost like a mandolin style yeah. slicer. What it is basically is you just put whatever little pieces you want to put in. And look how sharp. And you change out. Yeah, you're doing tomatoes. You so just that's change the slicer, out. and yeah. then you change it out. So we call this the six-in-one speed peeler for a couple of reasons. One, that's the slicing attachment. Great for cucumbers, for onions, tomatoes, etc. Pop it out, and now I can make it look a grater. I just put put that attachment oh, on. Pop it in, snaps. Pop it in. Stainless steel, so it's good quality. Yeah. And now we're going to hey, oh, do cheese, cheese Watch. grater. Boom. Oh, right. That's so smart, chef. Look at this. So you're grating cheese, you're slicing your veg, and it's quality. It's stainless steel. You take it out, throw it in the dishwasher, off you go. By Look the way, that. I didn't mention this is actually a six-piece set. You're going to yes. get the peel, the peeler mandolin frame. You're going to get the inserts for the grater, the zester, and the peeler, and yep. the julienne insert. And you also, do we also get these two peelers as well? You get those two peelers as well. So check so, this out. These peelers are special because... Stainless steel, really high quality, but look at this. You've never seen a peeler go both ways. Oh, dude. Look Those at how for 20 bucks? fast this goes. So just to peel a carrot, a cucumber, you go up, you go down, you go up, oh my God. you go down, you go up. Uh, look at that. Zucchini pasta with that thing. thing. I'm going to show you how to do the zucchini pasta. Yeah, show pasta. me, show okay. me, show me. So check this out. I'm more impressed Part with this. Here. <laughs> okay, so, but this peeler is great. This peeler is worth the price of admission right yeah. there. Peel up and down your carrots, your cucumbers. You want to do zucchini pasta. On the other side, you have this kind of julienne yeah. piece, right? Oh, There's dude. the noodles. Come on, keep going. Look at this. Look, look at this. Look it. And look. Watch. Oh my gosh, for salads or for pasta. Or for if you're watching your carbs. Do you know, let me tell you something, because I, I was look on keto for, for about a year and a half ago. I'm still do, I'd still stay off of sugar. But if you make a look good sauce, the, like zucchini pasta is delicious, because you're still putting cheese on it. You're still putting cheese, yeah. you put a little bacon, put a little knob of butter. To be look honest with that. you, it gets it so perfectly thin, you don't even have to blanch that. Look at so this. So that's great for zucchini pasta, but even if you want to do ribbons of carrots, ribbons your of cheese. cheese, boom. <laughs> Like guys. You know what though? If you put a vinaigrette on that, how good would that be? Cold vinaigrette? As a little salad. Cherry tomatoes? As a little salad. Yeah. It's wonderful, right? I mean, that's how so easy. That peeler alone, and it's not plastic, it's, it's steel. And you could do potatoes. Good. You could do I potatoes. Mean, all kinds of different things, whatever it is that you want, it makes it so much easier. Remember, you're going in two different directions. Oh, I'll Take show you that time. peeler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just take your time. There you go. Look at that. Down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up. Look. So easy. Amazing. So I'm looking over here. Isn't that great? I'm saying, are, are these, these are the colors that you can choose yep. from. So when you order today, you'll either get black, red, or white, and then you'll get the rest of that. Oh, and they also have a beige color. I think, what color? What do we call? Hazelnut. That's <laughs> beautiful. That's a fun <laughs> name. Uh, you get that included. It's a $20 bill, 813391. 
We're going to move right over because we want to get yep. to the uh, the cappuccino machine. We, you and I were just having a conversation. Yeah. Uh, chef asked me, he goes, uh, he goes, did you have a machine? I said, yeah, we had a machine in my restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the hardest thing in the restaurant to clean. 100%. It had so many different areas. First of all, it was for, you know, and, and honestly, we only, could only do two, two cappuccinos at the same time. Yep. It cost over $3,000. Yep. It was a mess. I would actually hire a crew to come in yep. once a week to have to clean the dang thing. Let me tell you, this is easy. It's from Kitchen HQ. That's our brand. So we kept the price down, $99.95. You can make one or two shot, okay? Yep. And remember, it's just like what you see at the coffee shop where you load up the little, uh, the little cup, turn it, slide it to the sideways, it locks in, that steam comes through, and you get the most incredibly rich cup of yeah. espresso, which you use for your cappuccino, obviously. Yep. And it's awesome. All, t all touch controls. All touch right? controls. So here's the thing. You notice that it comes with this little measuring spoon. You measure out your, your espresso, pound it down. I did a double shot. It preheated, now it's not flashing. I can press it. I like a double shot in the morning, and I like a single shot in the afternoon. So you get so both I of those this. inserts. Yeah. Now, Guy, you and I are both restaurant guys. We've had the fancy, expensive. Here it comes. Look at that. Espresso Liquid makers. Liquid gold. Now, what makes a great espresso? Wait till you see the crema on top. I got to show Wait you, you see, see the, the color. On top. Look at the chocolatey color. That's what you want. Look at that chocolatey color. Okay? Oh, and there's wow. the crema There it cup. is. This is a high quality espresso machine. Dude. So, I told you, I got my red cast iron living on my counter. I've got this living on my counter as well. This is now my morning routine. Here it you comes. You can tell. Here comes it's the a crema. Good quality espresso from that crema. And look at that. Oh, man. That man. doesn't get much better. For $99? Right? Look, look at the consistency looks. of it, the color of that coming Perfect. out. Perfect. And remember, what you're getting is you're basically getting a super intense coffee flavor. That's yep. basically what espresso is. A lot of people think it has more caffeine, it doesn't. Caffeine comes from how long the beans are actually percolated yep. in the water. So if you're like, oh, I can't drink espresso because it's too high in caffeine, it's, it's no, there's no difference, no. okay? Caffeine comes from soaking the beans. You get more caffeine in a regular cup of coffee, believe it or not. But yep. the flavor, the flavor that you get out of cappuccino or out of espresso. Exquisite. Oh, can I go so, in here, bro? It's all yours, man. So I'm gonna make myself a single cup because I've had a lot it. of coffee you today. Need it more I do me. need it. So like I said, I love that it comes in both sizes. If you like a double in the morning or single in the afternoon, this is now going to be the single. It's the same process. Holy Load up that espresso. Isn't that good? I almost said a bad word. <laughs> That's beyond good. Press right? it down a little bit. I do happen to like a little sugar it. in my in Throw my a little sugar in there. Bit. Absolutely. That's all you got to do. Either single or yes. double. You could do decaf espresso in here if this. that's what you prefer, right? And then you just take this that. out. Look at the cream. And it feels like quality, which is, again, it's really important to us here. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I've sat this up on top of the coffee machine because I want us to get a shot of it. I wanted you to see that. This is really what you're looking for, you is that little layer of, of what they call crema. crema. It's the foam on top, and this is a really thick layer. If you want to make professional-style coffee drinks, oh. you need to get one of these machines. My, I have a machine, believe it or not, I have a coffee machine that I spent about 2500 bucks on about yep. 10 years ago. Yep. All right, because I was like, I love coffee. And I can't drink it anymore as much because of my throat, but yeah. I love it. I invested in it because I, I you know, I, I, every day I would, I would think, and it grinds the beans, does all that stuff. Absolutely. But it doesn't make a good cup of cappuccino. Yeah. It doesn't have the press. It doesn't have this. It just uses regular coffee grounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You it's need, not the same. Because mine can only grind coffee beans to a certain degree. It can't make, it can't do uh, espresso. Let me also put it to you this deal. way, guy. So now I've got my single, I still have the beautiful crema, and you see how I did it. There's two buttons here for a single, a double, and this is gonna help you froth your milk, which I'll show you in a sec. But check this out. This is way better than those little pods, okay? Oh my God. You know those little pods yeah, that you I think, know. okay, well that'll be more convenient. Not really. You're rebuying pods and throwing them away and rebuying pods. It actually gets way more expensive and less convenient. Let me tell Do you it something. Fresh. That is so good. It's delicious. If you love if you've never had espresso, a lot of people have never tried mm. it. If you've never had Look at it, the crema. it's different than coffee. Mm. It's way more intense. But like I said, it's not Look higher in caffeine. That's nothing to do with that. It's a way more richer flavor. There's that crema. The, the, the beans are ground finer. So yep. you're extracting more of the body out of the out of the coffee bean. But the flavor is crazy. And if you like iced oh, coffee, man. a lot of people make their iced coffee out of out of espresso because Absolutely. they because they don't want it to dilute. Want it's perfect for that. If you love cappuccinos, it's got a milk frother built in yep. for $99. This thing, if this thing was $199, I wouldn't bat an eye. It's $99 if you want to get it. 
um, today at, at, on sale. I mean, it's, to me, and the size of it. Look at how big and it is. And the size. So and if you, you have a regular it. coffee machine, just put this right next to it, and you know what'll happen? You'll never drink the coffee. So it's funny, you, it's funny you said that, because I used to be a drip coffee guy. And I would drink, yeah, you know, drip coffee throughout the day, throughout the day. And then I got this, and I said, wait a second. I started to get a better quality cup of coffee, and now, instead of just drinking drip coffee and zapping it in a microwave, yeah. I'm doing my double shot in the morning, my single shot in the afternoon. It's the way to do it. Well, the extraction process is the whole deal when it comes to it comes to getting really rich coffee. Yeah. Um, and, and the little the little little K cups and all that stuff they're wonderful for convenience and all that stuff. And and you know there's a couple of brands that really do a good job, but you're never going to get that same depth of flavor that you get with true espresso. Yeah. Which is why I ran a, a northern Italian restaurant with a with another manager called Tommy's um, way, way back in the day in Connecticut. And I'll tell you the one thing that my Italian owner. Tommy would not cheap out on, I'll tell you, <laughs> was the espresso Good machine. Coffee. He was like, that's everything. We had the sugar crystals on the wooden sticks. It's so fun. We had yeah, the, yeah, you know, yeah. the Sambuco with the three beans. Oh, and man. We would, and you got to realize, we got, I would say 75% of my customers would order it, espresso. It's a beautiful way to look. To Take start the your morning, stir end it with meal. the sugar stick. You Absolutely. Know what I'm oh, my gosh. And watch how oh, it comes out. So and then good. look at the color. And look at the crema. It's so deep. I mean, look, it looks like soy sauce. At right. the, at, you know what? At the beginning, and then you see it kind of transform watch, watch. into that light froth right at the top. So here's the thing, like I said, about those pods. Cheers. Cheers, my friend. About those pods, doing it this way at home is cheaper, it's better, Man, it's good. fresher. This is the way to do it. The pods are replicating what an expensive wow. espresso maker does, and we've taken oh, the gosh. same technology and made That's it delicious. affordable and approachable at home. The crema at, don't lie, great guy. Great shot, look at that shot. The crema don't lie, guy. And, and realistically, the, the really wonderful part about the oh, crema man. is it's part of the, the, as it froths and comes through, you know, steam, yep. the steam compresses and you have air bubbles, yep. but it's why when you drink a beer, a this. beer with a head on it, is always 100 times better than a beer without. That. Because all those receptors in your yep. nose, even in your taste buds, but in your nose, you get the aroma. And yep. that, an aroma is connected to flavor and taste, obviously. So when you have that little cream on top and you're smelling that, pfft, You know what, top. you have a coffee, I have a coffee. Yeah. I might just pour, pour this, this right, right on right my gelato. Top. Dude, oh, you know what? Come on, man. I read the mind of the control room. Yeah, They're like, heck, dude, man. pour it on there. Here, here, let's put a cookie Make it one. nice. Make it nice. Like Look that. at Look that. At it, so, it's again, our first rodeo. If you bro. really, you know, <laughs> if you enjoy a beautiful espresso here, on, at the coffee fall. shop, now it's there fall. you go. Make it nice. Yeah. Look what I did. Yeah. I put the thing out there for fall. I like that. <laughs> Do it at home. Entertain with it. Make a dessert. Make it a tiramisu. I, let me just tell you, for $99, mm. this is a steal. All right? It's our own brand. You got any issues with it? Send it back. Yeah. You're not gonna have any issues with it. It's 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 so you can exchange it right if you needed to, right? Whatever. Although you're not gonna need to exchange this. You know, hey, try it for 30 days. If it's not what we say, return the dang thing. Get your money back, right? You don't even pay for shipping on exchanges. All right. So all I'm telling you is, if you want it, it takes up no space. Yeah. Right, we're getting our milk frothed up there. You got that the takes milk a frother on the side. Remember, there's a boiler inside that's pressurizing yep. the air. That's why, that's why you can extract so much flavor out of coffee, because it's steam versus just water go. dripping through. And now we're gonna heat up that cup, we're gonna get a nice little, little froth. Now this is my wife. Now when I make my straight up espresso, she's like, hold on, don't forget about me. I want my cappuccino. So you get the milk frother on the side. You can see the bubbles are, guys, can you get the overhead here of my bubbles? Look at the bubbles. Oh yeah. You that that milk is expanding. For you. I'll take it. And then we'll pour the thing on top. I'll you take know it. how to do that probably better oh, than man. me. Oh, man. Look at that. So now, here's what we do. Okay. Gotta... I'll take some of mine. I'm going to turn mine into a cappuccino. Here. Okay. Boom. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at it. Give me a break, Isn't man. that nice? Looks good. So. Here. I got no issue putting a little fresh coffee Give me a little top. something on there. You know what I'm saying? It's been a long day. <laughs> Don't buy it. You don't have to go out and buy it. Do it at home. Bring the coffee house home. Tell me how it is. You got, you got to taste it. I just want to show you the crema. Yeah. Look at how good. And we froth the milk so it stays nice and hot. Mm. How Dude. is that, man? I like the coffee no, going yeah, on top. Yeah, because it's so fine. I mean, well, Maybe I'm just tired, Dude, but I, I like it. I'd hear in my <laughs> restaurant, I'd have mm. a bunch of old Italian guys crunching on coffee beans in their Sambuca. Mm. They eat the beans whole. You know? By the way, a little liqueur in there is not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Froth your milk, make a single, make a double, do a decaf in the afternoon. Sometimes I do a decaf espresso. I love it. So takes up very little room. It's 13 mm. by 6 inches, okay? So look at look at my hands right here. No room. 
So if you live in an apartment or a condo and you don't want, and you're like a real cappuccino or coffee person or espresso mm. person, get one of these. A regular automatic drip coffee machine. Yeah. What are you gonna spend? You spend 99 bucks on that and all it does is make drip coffee? Yeah. Forget it, get one of these, you love it. 832-337 is the item number. My friend, it is Dude, always a pleasure. You I know had that. so much fun. Always good to see good you. Good to see you. Good friend, great guy. Um, Sarah is coming your way next. She's got Pry Beauty. Hmm. And I think she also has the Today Special coming up. I'm gonna buy mine from yeah, Sarah. I'm saving you a blue. Out. I love it. I'm saving you a blue. It. I'll see you guys on Friday. Take care. I'd worked for many, many years for one of the biggest beauty giants, and I really felt like the beauty industry had shut 